foreign tax credit limitation is based on net foreign source taxable income after deductions in each basket. Other things are also based on subsets of net taxable income. So we need to get from identifying income to net taxable amounts. To do so, we need to associate deductions with particular sets or classes of income. The rules for this are among the most difficult to understand of any U.S. tax rules. To decide what deductions go with what income, we need to sit at the deduction and decide what it relates to. For certain types of deductions, there are mechanical rules that must be followed. For others, we have to base our decisions on the facts and circumstances. These rules apply for the foreign tax credit, DPAD, and any other circumstance where we must associate deductions with income. Some deductions have a direct relationship to generating or trying to generate certain kinds of income. These deductions are specifically allocated to that income. Yes, Mike. So how do you tell what's what? Well, Mike, we need to get to where we understand the business enough. So what, you mean doing the business stuff? Oh, talk to operating people. I got it. Right, Mort. You might even get a plant tour out of it. Then you'll be able to say, this deduction goes with that income. Sometimes, though, the income a deduction relates to may be mixed foreign and non-foreign source, or mixed production and other income. In that case, we need to reallocate and apportion. Special rules apply for interest, research and experimentation, stewardship, and contributions deductions. These are mechanical rules that must be followed with limited choices. Interest and research expenses also must be apportioned by a consolidated return group as if all the members of the group were a single corporation. Interest expense for other than individuals must be apportioned based on assets. The taxpayer's total interest expense is apportioned by the ratio of assets producing income in one relevant class, such as foreign source general basket, to total assets. The amounts used are the taxpayer's tax bases in the assets. Where an asset produces more than one class of income, the basis must be apportioned based on the portion of income produced in each class. Thus, the basis of a manufacturing machine may need to be split up between foreign source and domestic source, not just for the 50-50 rule that we discussed, but also for the portion of production from that machine that is exported. One of the types of assets that must be counted in computing asset bases for interest apportionment is investment in subsidiaries. The basis must be counted even in years the subsidiary pays no dividends. The basis must be apportioned among the baskets of income that a dividend would produce. This is based on E&P. The basis also must be adjusted for a corporate shareholder by its share of E&P of, of the subsidiary. For example, assume Wobbly Widgets has a 60% foreign subsidiary that sells widgets. The subsidiary has a million dollars of E&P from selling widgets and no other income. Wobbly's cost of the shares is $10,000. Wobbly's very adjusted basis for interest apportionment will be 60% of the million dollars E&P plus the $10,000 cost or $610,000. It will be considered all general basket. Individuals apportion interest expense and all itemized deductions based on gross income. Other special rules apply with respect to interest connected with partnerships. Inside interest is apportioned on partnership assets and outside interest is apportioned based on the method used by the partner. Research and experimentation expenses must also be apportioned. Here, the taxpayer has a few choices to make. The costs of deductible R&D are apportioned within all activities of the taxpayer or the consolidated return group for each two-digit or three-digit SIC code. 
the taxpayer gets to choose which depending on what makes factual sense for the R&D activities conducted. Then, within each two or three digit group, R&D is apportioned using either the sales method or the gross income method. A taxpayer may choose which method once every five years, then is locked into that method for the rest of the five years. Under each method, part of the R&D is allocated to where the R&D is done, and the rest is apportioned based on amounts in the basket to total amounts. For the sales method, sales includes all sales of the worldwide group plus sales of unrelated parties benefiting from the R&D. For the gross income method, the amounts only include what's on the consolidated return. The choice between these two methods can result in significant differences in foreign source taxable income. There are special rules for carving out certain R&D and allocating those costs to specific jurisdictions. The amount of R&D and interest expense apportioned could potentially exceed the taxpayer's foreign source gross income for the year, resulting in a loss. Special rules apply to these foreign source losses requiring partial or full recovery of the loss before foreign tax credits are allowed. Both individuals and corporations may have stewardship expenses. These are expenses of an investor in managing the investments. These expenses must be allocated first to investment income, then apportioned among all investment income based on gross income. State taxes must also be apportioned if the state potentially taxes foreign source income. There are two methods of apportionment that may be used and they're both exceedingly complex. Deductions for charitable contributions are apportioned based on gross income. And now it's time for the third quiz.